intake noise that you're hearing is the sucking from these two massive intakes. So like I said, it has a unique sound like a like you hear on a dry clutch or a, um, an open header. This is the only intake I've ever I've ever listen to the roar of the intake. Like your grandfather used to say, Junior, if you're not happy right now, you'll never be happy. This is as good as it gets, guys. It gets different than this, but it don't get better than this. I absolutely love the 80 cubic inch Evolution engine in this package with the 1916 rims, the Bridgestones, top of the line progressive suspension, beautiful paint job. What's not to love, boys? This is this is the this is the one, man. This is the one. Fucking phenomenal. What's happening, fellas? This has got to be one of the best riding, best handling FXRs I've been on, and I've been riding these for over 30 years since 1990. This is this bike is set up right. I'm six foot two, and I really like the forward controls. These are a special set of forward controls made by Harley Davidson. They have the stirrups on them, so your boot, the back of your boot's got a place to sit. The the risers, these are the original factory FX LR risers, and they work freaking absolutely amazing they put you put your arms right where you want to be this bike has just been completely gone through it was taken right down to the frame the front end came off the rear end came off the tins came off and quite a bit of time and effort labor of love was put into this thing as you can see it looks like a brand new motorcycle it could easily be mistaken for a 2021 to those that aren't in the know and what they're looking at if you don't already know what you probably do this is a harley davidson fxr it is the best handling Harley Davidson sport in racing chassis ever made by a long shot and the main reasons why look at the, look at the the gusseting up here on the on the top of the frame the massive gusseting on there it's got a triangulated frame back here which is one of the strongest structures you can put in a frame this was designed by Eric Buell and a team of Harley Davidson engineers look underneath the seat on this thing you can see the massive gusseting on the backbone here and how large the frame tubes are um, the Harley stopped making these bikes because they were a little bit more expensive to uh, construct, construct in, uh, as far as an assembly line process goes. Uh, before I close the seat, this is a brand new Lepera saddle. You can see the seat, the, the, everything under here looks brand new, because it is, brand new battery. The original factory paint is mint the, on the frame. The uh, tins were professionally repainted, the chrome's in perfect condition. This is as nice as a, of an FXR as you're gonna find for sale anywhere in the world today. It's, it's absolutely perfect. The, uh, this engine, Harley Davidson had to do a partial assembly while in the frame, because there's not as much room around the motor as you'd see on a Dyna. Uh, the Dyna has a little flexier chassis, there's like a hinge in the middle. The Harley, this FXR just handles better and also has three rubber mounts for the motor instead of two, so it transmits less vibration to the rider 
This is an Evolution motor, widely known as one of the best Harley Davidson motors ever made. These are capable of 200,000 plus miles. I have a friend who has one with 200,000 miles that has the original pistons in it. It just did re redid the gaskets on it. Before I get into the motor, I want to start at the front of the bike and work my way back because there's so much to talk about with this bike. It'd be easy to miss it. I can tell you this, no stone was left unturned. I guess I'll start at the tip of the front tire. This is a brand new set of Bridgestone Spitfire 11S. This is my preferred tire for the Harley Davidson FXR. Unfortunately, they stopped making it. This is one of the last sets to roll off the production line. They're brand new, so it has the nubs on it. The this bike is an FXLR. It came from the factory with a 21 inch front wheel. Everybody knows who's in the sport and racing world that a 21-16 combination is not the hot setup. You want a 19 inch front wheel. This is the best front wheel you can possibly put from the Harley Davidson parts bin on the front of an FXR. This is a uh, matching Harley Davidson FXR rim. You can see that it's all been repainted and polished all the way around. The aluminum looks better than it did brand new. It's new got a stock. brand, yeah, it's new old stock and, and it's been polished. So it's even better than new. You can see that the attention to detail everywhere on this bike. Check it. Check out the uh, tire um, valve stem is brand new. The chrome cover, this is capable of putting a dual front disc on it. It has a single disc, but it has a nice chrome cover on there. Going over to the other side, you can see that it has a new floating front rotor with the uh, polished center cap. The, um, mas the uh, master cylinder has been rebuilt and the, the, the caliper has been rebuilt and it has new brake pads and a new chrome cover. The tension to detail is everywhere. The Allen bolt covers, all the hardware on this bike is either new, uh, refurbished, or it has Allen bolt covers on it. It has uh, the axle covers, the forks have been chromed, the uh, steering fork stabilizer is brand new. The fork tubes are in like new condition. It has a new set of turn signals, smoke turn signals relocated to the below on the forks, a little sportier look. This is original factory headlight. The uh, triple clamps have been polished, highly polished. This is a factory chrome stock handlebars that came on the FXLR. You can see the gauges are in mint condition. It does have a brand new set of clutch and brake levers, and these are the really nice. I love, I love the way these are set up, where you can uh, um, just do, operate the clutch with one finger. It's got like a uh, index finger catch point there. Brand new set of Harley Davidson mirrors. Check out these grips. Harley Davidson leather and chrome grips, super comfortable, and it even has a chrome custom adjuster for the clutch. Uh, the controls are in mint condition. The master cylinder looks like it just came out of the box and more attention to detail everywhere you look on this bike. Heading to the, I guess I'll, uh, I forgot to mention the front fender, the gas tank, the factory original side covers and the custom air dam on the bottom were professionally painted, professionally pinstriped, professionally graphics. And then the graphics were clear coated over. A paint job like this with a graphic package like this could easily set you back 1500 bucks. Uh, and this, this one- it. 1500 plus uh, you know it's just a, a standard paint job 700 bucks to they start at this is a high-end paint job it's done beautifully it's in a gunmetal metallic gray which looks fantastic and it has a the red pinstripe and just it just really pops the original factory gas cap is in mint shape zoom in on this leather piece right here this is the original Harley Davidson low rider leather panel on the front and I just love the profile of the of the low rider tank the uh, side panels rear fender also, the original items that were refinished, I already mentioned the LaParis seat, that's brand new. You see it has a brand new lay down custom license plate. The turn signals are in brand new condition. The tail lights in brand new condition. The uh, fender struts are in mint condition. And it has a brand new set of top of the line progressive billet nitrogen charged shocks with the chrome springs. These handle way better than the stock ones. The rear wheel, like I said, this bike was dismantled right down to the engine cases in the frame. Everything was taken off the bike and carefully refinished. If you bought a bike to us and asked us to do this much work, you, we'd ask you to leave a $10,000 deposit and, and then we'd call you when, when we needed more because it, it's just the amount of time and labor it takes to do a bike like this and, and the parts, it, it adds up pretty quick. You're looking at about $10,000 worth of work that's been done on this bike. Uh, the uh, rear uh, factory original mag was sent out and professionally powder, powder coated the same color gunmetal metallic gunmetal gray as, as the, the paint job, which is the nice detail you won't notice right off Jump Street. You can see it has a brand new Bridgestone Spitfire 130-90-16 rear tire, has a brand new floating rear rotor to match the front rotor. And when you stand back and look at it, I took a picture of this the other day, and what, what kind of struck me is the, the drilled holes on the, the custom rotor match the, uh, the drilled holes on the rim. It just looks performance, and that's what this bike's all about. This isn't just about cruising. This is about having the best 
handling performance Harley you can get. It, the shocks are brand new, top of the line shocks. I, I forgot to mention the front forks also have a progressive top of the line, progressive fork spring kit, new fork seals, new fork oil. The lowers have been re-chromed, the uppers look brand new. The suspension is, is as good as you're gonna get on a um, Harley Davidson without changing the front forks to an inverted set, which in my opinion takes away of the, of the traditional Harley Davidson look. So heading forward, you can see all of the pegs are new Harley Davidson leather with uh, uh, a leather. They look like leather, but it's actually a, a rubber that, that's designed to look like leather. And it's, it's embossed with the Harley Davidson logo and they're chrome. These are super comfortable. As I mentioned, the stirrups on the front, the chrome, th this is, this, this brake pedal was, uh, was, uh, it is chrome that has a Harley Davidson logo on it also. Uh, again, the front air dam. Look at the frame on this thing. This is original factory powder coating. This is union made uh, in the USA, of course, before they started ordering parts from Thailand or wherever they're getting parts for the new bikes. I know a lot of the stuff's made overseas. This, this, is, this is back when Harley Davidson production was um, 40, 50,000 bikes a year. That's why the, you, don't, you just don't see FXRs. They didn't make a lot of these. I have a letter from Harley Davidson confirming the authenticity of this bike and also confirming that only 1,197 of these were, were made this year. Now, out of the, this is with the best riding running Harley made from that period. Most of them were rented, ridden into the ground. To find one that's completely redone like this, good luck. Let me talk about the motor because that's the heart of the beast right here. This is an 80 cubic inch, 1340cc V-twin. I'll start at the intake and work my th way through the motor. It was taken right down to the engine cases. The uh, entire engine cases were repainted, the wrinkled black. The cylinders were repainted. The um, intake is an S&S &S twin conical k and style air filter, chromed, just beautiful. It makes a unique sound that I've never heard on any other intake on our Harley Davidson ever. It almost sounds like a turbocharger idle. It makes like a like a low pitch sucking or or, uh, or whining sound. Sounds sounds really awesome. And when you open it up, the thing just roars. Definitely makes a difference in the way this bike runs. You're drawing a lot of air in these air filters, and it's kind of like a ram air setup. So when you're doing 100 plus miles an hour, it's 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 getting plenty of air. Everything is chrome, billet, and then go to the carburetor. It's got a 42 millimeter Makuni flat side carburetor, jetted perfectly for this bike with new intake um, seals. The heads are the original factory chrome rocker boxes. There's new rocker box gaskets. The um, push rod cover tubes are in beautiful condition. The cylinder was taken off, a new base gasket, new head gasket. The, uh, all the gaskets on the motor are new, including the primary chain case gasket and the tri primary chain case seals. Um, the starter on it, this, this is a $500 top of the line uh, lifetime um, starter. You can see it has a push button right here. If you ever have a short on the uh, factory uh, factory switch up there, you can actually start it from down here, just, uh, which is kind of cool. The chrome covers for the transmission are in beautiful condition. The, pro the chrome cover on the ignition cover on this side is in, in mint condition. Uh, just just beautiful. The chrome on the bike is, is uh, remarkably uh, good condition for a 30-year-old classic. Just beautiful. The exhaust system, I run a, my FXR, I have a 91 FXR. My, my FXR has a a um, Thunder header on it, which uh, I, I love the Thunder headers. There's only two exhausts that I would buy for my FXR, the Thunder header or the Bassani Road Rage. This is a brand new Bassani Road Rage with the uh, custom billet painted black and uh, polished and, and, and uh, designed cap. This Road Rage pipe, in my opinion, is a better quality than the Thunder Header uh, as far as uh, not ha having issues with breaking welds or anything like that. These are basically bulletproof. A lot of the stunt riders prefer this pipe. It, it sits up nice and high. It doesn't put any smoke on your uh, uh, on your um, swing arm like the Thunder Header does. It doesn't discolor the powder coating. I just like the Thunder Header. It's old school, but of the two, this is probably superior um, um, mechanically and cosmetically. Just a beautiful pipe. You can see it's got the chrome covers all the way from the top, all the way to the back, so you're not gonna get any of that bluing or discoloring that you get on the Thunder Header. Kick-ass pipe, this is an expensive pipe. They're close to a grand just for the pipe. You're looking at a few hundred bucks for the intake, and it all adds up. Coming around this side of the motor here, you can see the primary is in absolutely gorgeous condition. Pretty common for Harleys of this era to have pitting chrome. It looks like the, the outer primary uh, has been re-chromed. It looks brand new. The inner primary has been completely repainted. The cylinder fins were, were painted when the bike was dismantled, and as far as the attention to detail, look at the, um, the covers, the, the, um, the, the covers on the engine, 
bolts or the covers on the, all the Allen bolts. Every bolt on the bike is either perfect or or, or uh, customized with a with a uh, um, an Allen bolt cover. Again, you got your your chrome shifter, your uh, stirrup foot pegs, the uh, chrome on the kickstand is perfect. The chrome on the axle covers is perfect. The rear belt cover looks to be brand new because it is brand new. The belt cover is new. The rim obviously was sent out, like I said, on uh, the same thing as the other side. The inside was powder coated to match the bike, and it's got their Spitfire 11R rear tire on it, which you can't get anymore, in my opinion, one of the best tires, best looking tires on the Harley. The uh, paint job on the bike, again, custom pinstriping, matching spark plug wire. Uh, the, I normally don't like colored spark plug wires, but as soon as I saw this, I was like, wow, this really works. The spark plug wires match all the pinstriping, just a beautiful piece. We, we've got three FXRs that, that we'll be videoing today. Um, they're all special in their own way. Junior, Kyle, Mario, they all pick this one as their favorite one. It just has a tremendous amount of curb appeal. It's custom, but still it maintains that traditional Harley Davidson uh, silhouette. It's got the gunfighter saddle, custom paint job. The motor's freaking awesome. Oh, I also have a dyno sheet too. Stock, these are in the right around uh, 57, 62 horsepower, depending on the dyno. This one's putting down 73.8 horsepower. I got the dyno jet printout out, out there uh, for to show you. That's a combination of things. The um, the the Ram Air dual Ram Air intake, the Makuni HS42 carburetor. It's got an Andrews EV27 cam, which is probably the most popular cam. More EV27s have been put in Evolution motor than any other cam made, and it has a Bassani road rage. So this thing runs freaking awesome. Um, I've taken it out in a couple test rides. It is the kind of bike that you want to get on and not come back. You just want to ride all day long. Unlike some Harleys where a couple hours you're done, this is an all-day bike. That's why most of these bikes have been destroyed because the, the people put hundreds of thousands of miles on them and or ride them hard and crash them. A lot of the stunt riders buy them. A lot of the club riders buy them. They're ridden hard. Um, I forgot to mention, it does have a brand new Pingle fuel petcock on here, brand new fuel lines. So the whole fuel system, the, the inside of the tank, the outside of the tank, the, the fuel petcock, the fuel lines, the carburetor, everything is like brand new. The oil, the oil tank is like brand new. The fit and finish of this bike is, in my opinion, a 10. It's absolutely freaking beautiful. And I guess, I guess we're kind of jaded here. We see a lot of bikes come through, but um, this is the one the boys here all like the most, you know. Special touches like the uh, billet aluminum, uh, chromed clutch uh, clamp right here and, and all the hardware done up so nicely so absolutely a labor of love this was a, a all winter project and uh, it's done it's ready to go it needs nothing hop on it ride it to Daytona ride this bad boy out to Sturgis uh, if you want to put a windshield on it and saddlebags whatever you want to do it's a it's a clean slate just looking for a new home that's all it needs if you have any questions about this kick-ass fxr give us a call 860-454-7024 31 years i've been riding fxrs my fxr is in, in the shop this is kaplan america approved you're going to love this bike and no excuses fxr junior you want to add anything about this yeah i had a field day riding the three fxrs that were uh earlier shooting the photos and uh this is by far my favorite for a couple different reasons that, that senior covered but just this thing's off the charts, guys. Makes me want to get a daily FXR. It's a kick-ass machine. You know, you're you're tall too. You're six two. The mid controls. And when I ride a FXR with mid controls, which everybody likes mid controls for different reasons, um, I feel like I'm riding my little brother's bike because my, my legs, my knees are literally up here above the gas tank. So I look a little funny on it. Um, the forward controls are phenomenal. This, if you're if you have forward controls on your Harley, you got to get the stirrups. Huge game changer as far as comfort. Just fantastic. And, yeah, and you could still dart around the parking lot in tight spots. Yeah. Uh, although, generally, people think the mid controls are better for performance. The, the, the forward controls work. It, it, they're more comfortable for sure. And, and these bars are right where you'd want them for all day riding. Just a kick ass machine. The right wheels, the right tires, suspension's done up, motor's done up. Not done up too much where it's going to, you don't want a 100 horse. Evolution motor that might have problems. This is a kind of bike you could sit in traffic at Laconia or Sturgis at Daytona. It's not going to burn itself up. One of the things you may not know is that there's a lot more metal in an 80 cubic inch Evolution motor than there is on a, on a 90 or 100 cubic inch or my 110 CVO Dyna with a twin cam. The, the, there's much less metal on the cylinder cases and the um, 
the cylinder the cylinder uh, liners themselves, so they, they can't take the abuse that an FXR can. We have stunt shows here in the, in the parking lot across the street. We had a bunch of stunt riders here, and one of them had a brand new Dyna S, which is considered the best Dyna ever made, and he had an FXR, and that actually, can, that interview is on, we interviewed him on our channel, and he gave all the reasons why he liked stunting on the FXR better. It's just a much better bike for, for high-speed performance riding, racing, or stunt riding. Let me show you a couple key things here that are pertinent to this motorcycle. Um, this thing's fully documented. I've got the original uh, owner's manual. Hey, Junior, is that Cunningham's car? No? Okay, it's not Cunningham. All right, so um, there you go, brother. That one's for you. Uh, the, um, this is the letter from Harley-Davidson. According to the database at Harley-Davidson Motor Company, the 1991 FXLR lowrider, VIN number ending in 389, there were approximately 1,197 of the FXLR lowrider customs produced in 1991. Uh, 979 of them were 49 state. The remaining 218 were, were built for California missions. So uh, it's a 1340cc, 80 cubic inch, rubber isolated V-twin engine with a five-speed constant mesh transmission, 4.2 gallon fat bob tank. So, um, and it shows the different colors, how many were, were made in each color. Um, so... There were 139 made in, in the original color. This was candy, sapphire, sun glow. Uh, so there was 100, 139 of these made exactly like that, 1,197 total. This is the um, hot bike of Quincy, Illinois. Did the dyno run on this bike right here. You can see it was putting down 73.2 horsepower with almost 80 foot pound of torque. Just to put that into perspective, the CVO dyna that I have, the 110, which is the most best D Dyna ever made and the Dyna S put down about 82 horse on the Dyna about about nine horse more um, at about 110 cubic inches to show you how efficient this this FXR is and it shows the the, the spec on it uh, uh, 42 uh, uh, 42 millimeter Makuni force winder uh, uh, the VNH pro pipe and an EV27 cam with a 160 main. So that was with the Vance and Heinz on it. It's got the, um, hasn't been dynoed since this brand new um, Bassani Road Rage pipe was put on it, but I guarantee you, you got an, at least an extra horsepower or two, so it's probably pushing 75. Back to the literature here, there's a stack of receipts here uh, that I'll go th breeze through quickly. Um, just just a lot of documentation for pretty much everything that was was done to the bike. The only thing I didn't have was receipts for the for the uh, paint job, but there's, there's there's tons of receipts. You get all the receipts for everything that was done to it, um, and I added it up and um, budgeted for the labor to do the job and the paint job, and I came up with ten thousand dollars, almost exactly ten grand in upgrades, modifications, paint, engine, and. Uh, Work, work done on this bike and labor. So if you buy a, you buy a Craigslist standard FXR that, that you need to go through, plan on spending a year of nights and weekends and um, a fat stack of cash. This one's done. You buy a new Harley, you buy a new CVO, soft tail, and you're gonna spend about $35,000. And as soon as you roll that off the line, even a $20,000 soft tail, you're gonna lose 20%. You're gonna lose four, to 10 grand on a new bike as soon as it's rolling out of the, out of the, out of the, out of the door. And they're, they're, they're making a lot of them. They only made 139 in this exact, uh, the, when this rolled off lot, there was only 139 and 1197 total. Most of those are long gone. So what is it? Why is that important? This is going up in value. It's not going down in value. Whatever you pay for it, it's going to be worth the same amount next year, maybe more because it's a classic and it's an FXR and they're super rare. Thanks for watching. Buy this bike with insurance. This is one kick-ass machine. Uh, is the camera picking up the metallic sun glow uh, paint job there? The paint job's off the hook. The graphics are off the hook. This is a no excuses. It's a real deal. Good luck bidding on it. Hope it goes to a good home. God bless America.